my box. Look at this. Hmm. And you said you have you have them in uh, pork, right? So you're going to be able to export them. And um, actually, no. I um, was able to take the PDFs and convert them to Word, mm -hmm. which is much easier. I'm going to leave Ra's original illustrations, right? Purity sake, and um, I edited two of them yesterday. Wow. So they're ready to go to the publisher. Is it something that could also, I guess because of all the illustrations, it couldn't really be an audiobook, eh? Because I love audiobooks. I, I really, as I think I told you, I struggle with holding focus and attention. So visuals are great, but I like to hear it. So. Um, I actually have the original audios. You mean of, of Ra talking about it? Yeah. No, I just mean you reading your own books too, or someone reading your book for you, right? I would so read my book. Um, yeah. Somebody told me about. Yeah, I just need time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I have 14 books now to edit and another one to write. So, and yeah. classes to teach. So it's a lot. How do you prioritize all that stuff? When I think about my life and all my interests, that is my biggest problem is which to focus on. Or do you, you're just going to do it all? <laughs> I'm going to do it all um, because it's God's mission for me. And it's not my choice. It's what gets put before. I mean, I had completely forgotten, completely forgotten about all these books. Hmm. And I'm sorry. <clears throat> so, the, you know, there's books and writings and early stuff, and it's all source material. So I'll just publish it all. Okay, so I wanted to show you this beautiful document that I did this weekend. Cool. So I also just have a straight up question about choice and like some of the things you've you've talked about, you know, like that you you were told the day and time you're gonna meet Marvin. And you know, I always hear people quote like Ra said, no choice said the voice. No, we have choice. Yeah. I'm I'm relieved to hear you say that because that's never said. Um, well. That's one of the things that I disagree with completely. Mm -hmm. um, when I don't live my life by astrology, I don't even look at it. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, because my mentor astrologer, Catherine de Jersey, said to me, dear, don't live your life by astrology. So, yeah, she told me the day and time I met Marvin. And when the voice said to me, go to India to the ashram, um, I went. I didn't think about, am I going to meet somebody? Am I not going to meet somebody? I was told by the voice to go. I went. I had no interest, really, in Osho. Mm -hmm. I'd never read anything. I knew nothing about him other than that a friend had been to his ashram in India. And I, you know, I went by myself. Uh, mm -hmm. And I remember being in the uh, taxi going from uh, Mumbai to Pune, three hour car trip. And here I am with three Indian men who was speaking Hindi. And I thought to myself, holy shit, they could dump me at the side of the road, kill me, dump me at the side of the road, and nobody would know. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, that thought went through my mind while I was in the taxi. Mm -hmm. uh, but the voice told me to go, so I went. And then it happened, you know, God's plan. I met Marvin. He was not planning to come back from India. Mm -hmm. um, and he had left his medical, and we lived within a mile of each other. I remember reading that and just thinking like, so you lived close to each other, hadn't met there, had to meet in India. <laughs> so interesting. And we were talking about it last week. He was not planning to come back. 
Mm -hmm. And I, when, after we met, I, met, I re, and we talked about it last week, I thought to myself, because he said to me, I'm not planning to come back and I don't ever plan to get married again. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, okay, an unavailable man, what do I do? I figured I'd have a flink. <laughs> How many times have you heard that voice? Like, has it only been a couple times in your life where it stood out so much? You're like, I'm dropping what I'm doing and going. And I guess the other part of the question is. I've what? heard the voice my whole life. Okay. Wow. And I have followed it my whole life. And um, the, I was guided to go to the University of Chicago. It was, when I write, I don't think. I write, I download it. So when I did my application for University of Chicago, I remember doing it. I mean, I remember writing it and knowing that I would get in. Hmm. And I would get in because of what I wrote. Um, but I, I've, you know, my biggest experience, the, the first big experience was uh, January of 1974. And that completely changed my life. Mm -hmm. And what was that experience? I don't remember the date specifically. Um, that was when I was asking of what am I afraid? Oh. And God appeared. A light appeared, brilliant light, blinding light, and I was given all knowledge and told about religion, what it is and what it isn't, and told about relationships, what they are and what they're not, and I wrote a book based on it. And like it sounds like one of those like where someone's in a terrible accident and they've seen the light and they have like this, like did something happen? Like what happened that day? Or you were just walking and... Were hit no, I was, I had uh, divorced my husband. I had just gotten licensed. I had no income. I had just gotten licensed. I didn't know better. I was going to open an office. Um, and I was anxious. And I had started meditating. And so I was sitting in the evening. My kids were asleep. And I was asking the question of what am I afraid? Of what am I afraid? Of what am I afraid? And then this light appeared. Hmm. Coming through the, you know, I was overlooking Lake Michigan. Hmm. Uh, so it was pitch black outside. And this light came in through the window and enveloped me and told me about reincarnation and relationships and religion. And it's not words, it's knowing. It's a voice that imparts knowledge without speaking. I have so many questions. <laughs> so um, we should do this meet set thing, but I would love to talk to you more about this. And okay. uh, I wanna like... show you mm -hmm. um, the document I made. Okay, awesome. It's it's very beautiful, I think. I began to, uh, in my own mind, I integrate the tree of life because human design is a synthesis and most people are not using the other disciplines. So I decided uh, because um, this, uh, let's see, Mystery meets Zach two is the one who was born in 1940. And yeah. he doesn't really have much of the um, channels between the self and the throat, but Mystery meets Zach one does. Okay. And he ends up with a split definition, even in the composite, but he gets, uh, six of the eight gates out of the self center. 
Hmm. So here's the self-center. So if we looked at, let's say, channel 731, mm -hmm. this is the correspondence to the tree of life. Okay. 731 is the disposing or sensible intelligence, and it's um, paired with the sixth, the lover's card. And it's between two Leo gates. So Isn't when you come here, you're 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 talking about this particular person, right? Not just the seven thirty one. No, channel. no, I'm talking about the seven thirty one. Okay, cool. Because I have that too. So that's I'm taking it in as like. But when you said Leo, is it always in Leo then in that channel? It's not. Oh, seven. It's gate seven is in the astrological sign of Leo, and oh. so it's it's gate thirty one. So it's a Leo and a Leo gate. That's why it's leadership. Hmm. You know, it's fire energy, but it's, I am the disposing sensible intelligence living in the truth of the one self as it expresses and aligns in manifesting life. Mm -hmm. Now, these statements are statements that I wrote for the um, path of intelligence uh, as part of my uh, exam when I finished these uh Kabbalistic study right. and it so given that it's paired with the lover's card it tells you that leading and being a leader needs to be in the vibration of love and you needs to be seeing and honoring the divinity in every person you're leading okay and I did it for all of the gates of the self-center. And the 731, at least in the traditional human design, is the alpha. My wife and I both have that. So now that you mm -hmm. sort of discuss this, and then both of us with that energy, and I just think about like our interactions with each other or with others around us, it's it's very, very interesting. <laughs> when you like because when you just read it and you don't have the the energy the the theme of it changes well the, it, the most of uh, i'll stop the share um most of the human design people have no astrology background mm -hmm. and Ra had none so the while human design is a synthesis of the tree of life chakras astrology and the i ching it's become a formulaic based on Ra's interpretation of the I Ching. Mm -hmm. That's all that's being talked about. Mm -hmm. And when you add in the astrology to it, then there's a whole other meaning, which is why I always do the astrology charts at the same time. Yeah. And now I'm adding in because when I look at a chart, and for example, with um, Mystery Mitzak, uh, this is the 67. This, he has three of those, he has a lot of those gates, but the uh, Mystery Mitzak 2, I call him the guy born in 1940, is a much better teaching example. Hmm. Interesting. Because he's such a reflector in so many of the layers. Right. And yet he becomes such a strong manifesting generator. So he's a manifesting generator. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, so if you want to get into it, I can move to that. Yep. Well, let's let's do that because like I course pulled it up in sort of traditional human design there. It shows him as a projector, but we're right. talking about this noble. But I design. have my charts for him. Yeah. And sorry, I'm just thinking like, remember, there's an audience that's going to watch this. Um, I just want to make sure that because I know, having talked to you about Noble Energy Maps, so maybe maybe we should just make sure when you pull it up, sort of do your thing and just remember that we're talking about the four worlds. Oh, you won't forget you're talking about the four worlds. I'm letting the audience know <laughs> that um, what we're talking about here is uh, Dr. Eleanor's approach to, not even approach, just like own discoveries and work <laughs> and tenacity um, of taking all of these 
uh, methods and, and and pulling them together. See, I'm already butchering what you've done, but um, we'll just I just want to make sure because at some point we either have to like let's start or we've already started, and then we'll discuss uh, mystery meat sack number two. Two. Yeah. Cool. And if you want me to compare mystery meat sack one and two, I can do that too. We could. I mean, they're definitely different people on different trajectories. And um, I have no idea who they are yeah. or what they. Well, and I know you don't really follow pop culture. So for a lot, you, you'll probably know both names. I think you will it'd almost be impossible to have heard, not heard both names, but. Um, well, at the end, you'll try me. I probably yeah. have heard both names. <laughs> well, we'll see. And I look forward to it. I just want to make sure in my head I'm not doing a ton of editing because we're jumping between the two. But like, well, let's do this. Uh, yeah, Mystery Meat Sack number one was born in 1967. If you want to splash in that person, by all means, and I'll reveal who it is after. But who we're really here to look at is Mystery Meat Sack number two, born in 1940. Right. And like when I put this on YouTube, this would be a thumbnail. It would be a picture of the person, and then that's the seed planted. Perfect. Let's go. Let's. Okay. <laughs> So you want me to share my screen? Yes, please. And I assume you just see the chart? Uh, yeah, in the recording, this should be there and fully in view. I will make it bigger. Thank you. And um, let me just jump in. And for those like that are being introduced to Noble Energy Maps and, and your work for the first Oops. time, um, You've got the same, you've been given the same information that someone in traditional human design would have gotten, birth date, birth time, birth location. Um, right. But with that, you then take and take that information and do your own calculations based on your own extensive work since your interactions with Ra and have taken it and <laughs> frankly validated what need to be validated and ran with what wasn't correct and and have dedicated your career to it. So um, yeah, please just make sure because you know that I've heard from you, but with with each of the worlds and the different maps, just take a moment to describe each one as though I've never heard it before. Well, let's start with the mandala. Okay. The mandala of synthesis, as I call it, is what the human design is based on. At the center, we have a model that's similar to the tree of life, the Kabbalistic tree of life and chakras. Then we have the astrological wheel and a human design chart is based on the birth date, time and place of birth. Um, so we put the person's time in and we get a chart. The basic human design chart has two calculations the birth date and 88 solar degrees prior to birth. Mm -hmm. That would, in the wheel, put the um, mystery meets at two. Mm -hmm. His prenatal son was in the 51st hexagram or in the sign of Aries. By the time he was born, he was in the sign of Cancer. And then three months after birth, which from a developmental standpoint is when we have volition and choice. And I do a calculation for the postnatal chart using 88 solar degrees after birth, that would take him to the 48th hexagram. So if you look at the 51 and the 48, you've gone halfway around the zodiac. So by the time a baby is three months old, there, the sun has go, gone through all the signs halfway around the wheel. Mm -hmm. So the baby has that experience of those cosmic energies. And mm -hmm. the earth has gone from the 48, essentially, all the way around to the 51. So by the time a baby is three months old, every cosmic energy in the zodiac because the moon goes around the wheel every month, the baby has experienced the whole zodiac. Right. And that 
means that when we do the charts, and these are the charts, I've calculated the solar chart, the human design chart is the first chart on the page, and I've labeled it conscious waking reality. But if we look three months after birth, when the baby actually had volition and had all of the cosmic energies programmed into their aura, uh, we see a very different design. Mm -hmm. And if you combine those two, you get how a person actually functions. However, based on my research and what I knew from Ra about the sleep design of a mammal. Um, I did the calculation as Ra instructed 88 lunar degrees before birth. And we get what would be the sleep design. And I believe in, oh, I didn't do it. I have a different chart that shows all of the worlds and all of the matrices and all of the complexity. For this broadcast, I'm just going to show these eight charts okay. that are calculated um, based on what, when I was doing the research and I had the dream design from Ra, which he didn't know what to do with. So one of the things I'll be releasing fairly soon is the early books that Ra and I did together on the sleep and dream design and awesome. um, you need to understand the sleep architecture and the different phases of consciousness in order to really understand what we're looking at mm -hmm. in the kabbalistic tree of life every center has four worlds so if we're basing our study of human design on disciplines, we need to be looking at all the disciplines to see how they inform what it is we're looking at. So when I was working with the, what Ra called the dream design, it was the dream design, but it wasn't the sleep design. So I needed to do an additional calculation. And that meant that and I used my twin kittens who I had their birth times to the second. Mm -hmm. And they were, tw they were twins. So I looked in the twins for what would differentiate them physiologically because one died at age uh, 10 and the other lived to age 18 and it was a genetic predisposition. Mm -hmm. So I can explain the calculations, but for this purpose, I did the calculations scientifically, I validated them on my twin kittens, and when I laid them out on the page, I noticed that they correlated with specific developmental times in human development, known psychologically as critical periods. So we have a birth chart that correlates to the third trimester of pregnancy. Then we have a chart that's a week before birth, and that correlates to when the spirit or soul enters the fetus and activates. And it's also when the baby tends to drop in pre-delivery. Two days before birth, the mother's hormones shift and the baby is coming, beginning to get ready to be born. An hour and a half before birth is transition of labor. So the first four charts on my page are a composite of who that baby is at the moment of birth. Right. Um, the second set of four is after birth. So it's an hour and a half after birth when the baby is breathing on its own. Two days after birth, where the milk comes down and is fully in and the baby and the mother really attach. Right. And when, once the, um, the attachment is based on the smells and the feel and the connection that the mother and baby has. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot in psychological theory about attachment, 
the solar minute chart is the attachment chart. Mm -hmm. A week after birth is the postnatal spiritual. In some religions like Judaism, it's when the bris occurs because mm -hmm. at that point, the baby is in a relationship with the divine. Mm -hmm. And in other religions and other cultures, babies are not named for a week mm -hmm. because they don't consider that the soul has anchored. I consider the spiritual design the integrative field of consciousness because when we sleep and dream, and you'll see that the prenatal lunar chart is labeled REM, rapid eye movement. Yeah. When we dream, we are horizontal, but when we dream, we're in a cortex that can register between worlds. That's mm -hmm. why we only partially remember dreams. But when I look at the charts, what I'm looking at is the energetic progression in a person and it moves in a figure eight. It moves from the mental, me, well, we're moving emotional to mental, to physical, to spiritual and back. So it's mm -hmm. a figure eight across the world. And then I look at the composite of a person and lo and behold, 95% of the population in their integrated chart turn out to be manifesting generators. Mm -hmm. So this is an interesting teaching um, chart because mystery to meet staff mm -hmm. born July 7th, 1940 at five minutes after midnight was, would be seen as a projector in the human design chart. Right, and, and you, sorry to interrupt, but like that's the mental world, right? Like that's- That's, that's the mental world. The mental world. We have the mental the world, world, the the physical world, the emotional world, and the spiritual world. Right. And the tree of life always talks about the four worlds. And um, in esoteric theory, we talk about other worlds and other dimensions. My charts show the world and how we are designed in each of the four worlds and then how we integrate the worlds in our consciousness and function to realize our optimal potential. Um, I don't use any formula in reading a chart because everybody is unique and the way the energies and the pathways come together, very unique. Now, what's very interesting in this, in Mystery 2, let's call him, mm -hmm. is that he has the heart center connected to the self, and then he loses it. So he's somebody who probably wants to be initiating people into consciousness, talking about his own creative self, and is somebody who um, is strongly intuitive uh, and has a sense for other dimensions. Now, let me just add that the green you see in all of my charts are Chiron. Anyone born in the 1900s or after had an act of Chiron in their design. Uh, the Magi astrology people believe that Chiron is the most critical planetary body in the whole astrology wheel because it gives us a picture of gifts and life purpose. And what's so interesting in Mystery 2 is that he prenatally had his Chiron in the 39th hexagram, which is also his son. Hmm. And it's coming out of the root center, but doesn't connect to anything else. Now, if we look here again, his son is a gate that does not have a defined channel. Mm -hmm. So if we look at the integrated chart, 
What we're going to look at is the pathway of energy. How does his energy hook up? How does it all get connected? Now, he's certainly right. a manifesting generator, but mm -hmm. what's really interesting in him is the central column, which is so strong, is separated. He's the split definition manifesting generator. Mm -hmm. And um, in reading a chart like this, you want to use your own intuition and your own logic to consider how would this person put together these energies and where do they come in? So let's go through the chart and see, okay? Do any of these hook up? Well, we have a hookup that he loses in the spiritual design. And he's a reflector in the spiritual, the emotional, and the physical prenatal worlds, and in the postnatal physical and emotional world. That tells me that we're looking at a person who's an emotional empath. He picks up the energy of the people around him, and he doesn't always know if it belongs to him or not. So this is a person who may very well, and we're going to the integrated, who may very well get emotional reaction, may be emotionally reactive without knowing why he's emotionally reactive. Hmm. I'm calling it a he. It could, for all I know, be a she. So I was gonna, that's interesting, because in my head I was like, okay, I don't think I said he or she. So I was like, is is Eleanor assuming that, or could you tell male or female? To me, I I, I don't believe any indication comes from any of this information whether the per, this person is male or female. But. No, it doesn't. And I just in my books and in my materials, I'm referring to he mm -hmm. because it's uh, when if you try to do a he she, and now with all the different genders, it, we could go crazy. Yeah. So, okay. So, and and I want to because this is a perfect time to just interrupt you for a second. So, the time I think is accurate, but I don't know for sure because this is a person I don't know and I can't ask. But I, I you know usually when I find the date and time, it says estimate. I didn't really see that for this person, so I think the time is pretty accurate. Um, the place to go, Sean, and for anybody else, um, as an astrologer you really do want an accurate time. In the design charts, it's not as critical, but in fact, it really is because we're using um, calculations that are down to the lunar minute. Right, yep. So, um, when, if you don't know, and it's a public figure, you can go to Lois Rodden's A-plus charts and the Astro Database, and um, when I did the study on 45,000, well, 30,000 cases, I used Lois Rodden's A plus only ratings for people in the, in the general population or the study. Okay. So you, you, you know, as an astrologer, you really do need to be very specific about birth time and place. Four minutes, difference can mean a different ascendant in astrology. Human design does not use the ascendant, but as you'll see, if I have the time to show this person's astrology chart, it is important to use. Okay. So well, for sorry, this I, person- I wanna clarify one more thing, just because I wanna set you up for success. So I, I think the time is pretty close. Um, I obscured the city, so it's the same time zone. But because this person's city might give away a clue, I didn't want, and, and even though there's a good chance that you, no, I think you'll know who this person is, but I didn't want to, so I so I just let you know that it's not the exact city, but it is the right time zone, which is my understanding is it's more about the- it, That's fine. Yeah. And human design is not as very specific as some astrological information needs to be. Cool. And so then, as an astrologer, I'm always very specific but human design people may not be as specific. Right. 
And then for those, those watching, the green in here represents the Chiron, because that would be, we don't normally see that in a, in a human design body. Probably. You'll see that in all of my charts. Right. And in this person's case, it's rather important because you see three gates activated out of the throat center. Um, and when we go to the integrated chart, we're talking about someone who has a very strong sense of his own spirit, who can also be a person of influence and especially influential with words, but also as a reflector in so many of the layers and an emotional empath with the 1222, this person if he is emotionally reactive, can devastate people. Hmm. Um, it, depending how conscious this person is, and I certainly can't tell that from a chart. What I can say is that in a given moment, this person functions as a projector, but with um, a lot of ability to perceive what's going on around him and is extremely sensitive and is likely to resist anything that tries to move him off his own given path. Hmm. The strength of the central column the 515, which is in all worlds, and is a portal between the worlds. The two, which is a very critical gate because it is one of the gates that is in the tree of life, is the gate of probation or trial. Um, I have correlated the paths of intelligence in the tree of life with the channels. And I haven't really released that yet, but the um, 515 and the 4629 in this person's chart are pretty strong indicators that this is a person who wants to integrate consciousness, who may at times, because of the openness of the chakras in the different worlds may pick up energy from other people and let go of his own energy. Hmm. And it needs to always be asking, am I going in the right direction? Am I integrating the worlds the way I want to integrate them? Here's where this person has a lot of ability to exercise choice if used consciously. Let's go back. Okay. Let's look at how the solar plexus gets activated. We have the 22 in the mental world. Yep. And we connect up to the 12 in the postnatal lunar. And the 12th hexagram is a portal gate to the spiritual world. Um, so when you see it in a spiritual design, uh, you know that this person is communicating on a level that's not just mental. It's not just about what the person thinks. So this person became, got his root defined a week after birth did anything else connect up between the worlds these don't connect well the first real connection between the worlds was the 28 38 between the root and the splenic center and at the same time this person got the 54 which connects up 
to um, the 54 is in the biological matrix, but it's also related to goal setting and goals. And he gets the, ah, the 58 spiritually right away at birth. The 58 is a ability to judge frequency. Um, so we're dealing with a person who likes to be sensitive to the needs of other people, who is an empath, who can be a caretaker, can be emotionally somewhat volatile if with the wrong people in the wrong place and not tuning into himself and is um, capable of great power in composite. So mm -hmm. you're dealing with a highly sensitive individual who um, wants to make a difference in the world and who uses an intuitive, um, I would say that this person energetically tunes in to what's going on around him and then um, decides based on his own, if he's tuned into himself, his own resonant frequency as to whether or not to engage or not engage. So if I were coaching this person, I'd say you're highly sensitive to everything around you. And what you need to tune into is what frequencies align with you and your intuition. And when they do, you need to, to tune in to whether or not you're headed in the right direction with that perception and goal or response, whether you're emotionally in a balanced plate place, whether you um, are integrating the worlds for yourself. It's very critical for us to integrate the mental, spiritual, emotional, and physical worlds. And the timing of that is different for every individual. So for this individual, um, I would be saying to him, um, as a projector, um, you do not need to be recognized by other people. You need to be tuned in to recognize what resonates with you, especially on an intuitive level, and what makes you feel like the self you know yourself to be is recognized by the people around you. Hmm. If they don't recognize who you know yourself to be, then they're not people you would want to put your life in their hands. You would not surrender to them, so to speak. Um, because you do not gain the solar plexus until three months after you were born, at which point you really knew what was right for you and what was not right for you. Um, let me see if there's anything else that connects. It's a very interesting chart because usually there are many more activating connections between the worlds but in this person's case, it took three months for the self to be energetically validated in the sacral center. Mm. So this is a person who should never make a snap decision, needs to take it in. I'd say use past experience and meditation on whether or not what you're proposing for yourself aligns with your bigger goals and your values. Values are critical. So um, it, I usually ask people 
to write their values in all four worlds. Because the values in each world has unique characteristics. Mm -hmm. And so for this person, using past experience to inform the present, because of the 155 and the 46, 29 and the two, we have a person who definitely knows what direction he needs to go and how that needs to manifest to, to be aligned with the self. Hmm. And so this person needs to absolutely be in touch with what's right for him and how he wants to manifest the spiritual dimension of who he is in the real world. And it is about a deeper level because the primary manifesting channel is the 28, 38, uh, 40, um, 57, 20. And then secondarily, the 1222. Hmm. We get the 2838 in the postnatal lunar. So within a week of birth, this person knew anxiety, knew when things weren't right for him, and knew when things were right, and would have non-verbally been giving that message to the family of origin. Really, eh? But it didn't anchor in the sacral center for three months. Any hmm. questions, Sean? Now, I did do the astrology uh, this person. And for fun, uh, that's the progression. But then we have, I played with it a bit here. Well, uh, so let's let's check in. How are you doing for time? Because I do want to reveal who it is. I want to talk about some of the things that, that we discuss. We need to leave some time for that. I think we'll leave Mystery Meat Sack 1 out because okay. it's time. But um, um, so we'll just, um, but yeah. How, how are you um, doing for another uh, well, uh, Why don't you ask your questions and then we'll see what we have. And Well, I almost I want to tell you who it is, but uh, I'm not quite ready. So okay. I think what, what um, I'll, I'll, I will give away that it is a he. Um, the, the what? It is a he for sure. So um, that, and then I was just looking into some of the background and things I didn't know about. Um, so his parents split when he was three. I don't know if there's any- He what? He what when he was three? His parents had split when he was three. He uh, battled alcoholism in the, in the late 80s. He, um, what was written about him is very grounded, uh, all about art and family, um, you know, despite massive fame. Um, but, you know, like, and I, and I kind of agree about this person. Um, lots of hospitalization in childhood. So appendicitis uh, caused a uh, coma a uh, pleurisy, which I'm not even familiar with, and tuberculosis. So he fell behind. Okay, so here's here's where those make sense. Okay. The only channel in the body graph that goes directly from the throat to the heart, is, the heart muscle itself, is the twenty uh, five, the the forty five twenty one. Now he doesn't have that, but that's oxygen. Okay. Okay, we take in oxygen and it goes to the heart. We it disseminates to the body through the 5125. Um so the oxygen is going to the lungs through the 5125. Not surprising that this person with the the the, the pressure on the 5125 and then losing it and then gaining it would have had lung issues. Hmm. Um, also, the openness in the designs make this person vulnerable to all the energy, if hmm. not protected. Right. So the illness and the alcoholism is indicative of someone who was 
using substances to draw, try to integrate the self into a unified whole. Hmm. And he doesn't get a unified whole either. He's a split definition manifesting generator. And the sacral center is separated from the rest of the design. Mm -hmm. So you have a gut level response that may or may not say what he needs, especially early in life, and a manifesting design that wants to manifest whether or not it's right for him. So if someone like this had a reading of the integrated chart early on and didn't knew and had a parent who was reading the energy and saying, wait a minute, this isn't the energy you started the day with. I had an interesting experience at lunch um, not that long ago with um, the uh, parents brought their seven month old baby. And the baby and I immediately locked eyes and recognized each other. Mm. Now, mind you, I knew nothing about this baby. Um, I was sitting across the table from the mother and the baby and sitting next to the baby's father. And periodically, the baby would look at me and we'd lock eyes and she would smile and we, we were just immediately bonded. Mm -hmm. And at one point during the lunch, I said to the parents, do you know your baby sees energy? And they went, no. <laughs> and then the mothers told me that the only time this baby gets really upset is when she is put in the car seat. Hmm. And I said to the mother, have you told her how upsetting it is for you that you have to do that for her safety, even though you know how upset she gets by it? Hmm. And the mother said, no. And I said, your baby sees and experiences energy. You need to be transparent because she's reading the energy field of everybody around her. Mm. And yeah, the parents did start telling the baby mm -hmm. what was going on. And as soon as the mother said to the baby, I get really upset that I have to do this to you um, because I know you feel trapped, the baby broke out in a big smile. Mm. So to use a chart like this and say you're a split definition, what does that mean? You know, when this person becomes a split definition manifesting generator, how do we help that person tune in to what's right internally so that what gets manifested externally does not do a disservice to him? And, and it sounds from what I know now of this person's life, he was not living his true design for a lot of his life, even though he manifested great things. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. I have to come back to that, the baby actually, because I, I've, I've locked eyes with babies sometimes and I, I kind of sense something. So I don't know if that's something that you and I share mechanically or circuitry, but this is also a baby that wouldn't have understood the words of the mother saying that to the child, right? Because this is a baby. No, but she, they, the baby understood the energy that the mother energy. was communicating in the words. Yeah, because she's like she's expressing her intention to the child. The child picked up on that, relaxed. Like that's amazing. <laughs> so I just want to make sure that was clear there for someone else that would, would be listening in on that. Yeah. Right? Like, old me would have been like, it's a baby, it didn't understand the words, but it's not that. It is the the outer projection of the energy of the mom. All the mother was saying to her when she put her in the car seat was, I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. But it didn't communicate that the mother knew that the baby felt trapped mm -hmm. and that the baby had feelings that needed to be acknowledged. Mm -hmm. And also to begin to teach a child that as a parent, we don't always have the freedom to do with the child what we'd like to do. Yeah. Pa mm -hmm. Case in point, school. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, where would you like me to go next with this material? 
Uh, well, again, checking in on time because uh, I'll tell you who the person is. Maybe we can talk about their career a little bit. Um, and then I just have straight questions about some of the things that you said already. So, do you want to do you want to comment on anything else, or do you want do you want some hints even? Actually, um, I'll, I'm not going to know who the person is because I don't know a lot of public figures. In if it was in the music industry, I wouldn't know it. Okay, well, I'll, I'll give you a clue. It, it, person's in the music industry um so let me let me ask about channel 515 because i've heard people describe that channel now that i've said that this person's in the music industry um and they have the 515 channel is there anything intuitively that you would want to ask about that with that clue um well the 515 is an integrative channel because it's the only channel in the body map that's in all worlds Oh. So this person, given his energetic sensitivity, would be especially attuned to the animal kingdom, to the spiritual kingdom, and is, is going to want to integrate a lot of information, probably the use of drugs, to tune in and try to reaccess the sacral response. Because uh -huh. a person like this, now you have it now you don't now you feel it now you don't okay and he doesn't have an anchored sense of self that is what's missing is the 14. so you have tuning into the cosmos and you know if as an artist being able to tap into the collective unconscious in a huge way and probably being overwhelmed by the amount of information downloading without being able to sort it out. No head center. <laughs> so um, you have a brilliant person yeah. energetically, but not necessarily someone who's emotionally balanced. Right. Fascinating. So I, I've done a few of these meat sacks before and, and someone that watches it is going to probably see it. And they've commented before that I always seem to pick people that uh, have characteristics that I have. And I didn't, I, I never intentionally do it, but it's clearly my curiosity. I'm like trying to dig. And but your chart's very different than this. Yeah, but certain, certain similarities do resonate. And so one thing, like I apparently... Uh, I have the 515 in my Chiron, but not in my, right, uh, in my total integrated chart. So I guess my curiosity is, is the information I saw about Chiron with mine, is that 515 even relevant? And the reason well, I asked- I'm looking at your chart, hold on. We're talking about music and uh, yeah, so it's just very interesting. I, I want to just look and see, wait a minute, I have to, I have to get to, um in your chart well you have the 4629 you don't get the 515 no i know i know not not in the um in your stuff but like if i go on a genetic matrix and put in chiron or i go into neutrino design and i choose my chiron data it draws a body graph and it always shows the 515 and i'll tell you why i'm drawn to it i've always you're you're February fifth, nineteen seventy two at 18. Yep. Uh you don't have Chiron in the five fifteen. No. Yeah. It's the wrong chart. Yeah. Uh okay. the some of the programs are using the wrong ephemeris. Hmm. So you okay. when you have there's no way you you don't have the five fifteen. Okay. But Fair enough. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll reveal one more thing. So this person's uh, a drummer, and I am too. And I had a reading once uh, where uh, the person was like saying, like, are you sure you, you're good at the drums? Do you, are you sure you like the drums? And I was like, yeah, I thought so until you said that. And then he kept digging and digging, and then it turned out that during my Chiron, the 515 lights up. Um, but again, maybe that's not accurate, right? So Oh, it would be somebody looking at your Chiron return, maybe? That's what I mean. Yeah, the Chiron okay. return. Okay. Um you can't you can't take a channel 
and give it a meaning and tell a person how they're going to use that channel. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work that way. We're right. not compelled by anything astrological. And the use of the chart to direct somebody in a specific way is not the way the chart ideally is used. The I see this as a personality test in a sense because it's the most accurate personality instrument I've used in my career and I taught personality testing. Mm. Uh, but we don't know, you know, you're a drummer. You have a completely different design than this drummer. Mm -hmm. But you, what you're expressing with the drums is coming out of your core of being, whereas what's coming out of this person's drums would be completely different. Mm -hmm. Okay. So your sound would be completely different. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, that that's kind of reassuring because after that reading, I left it going, maybe I shouldn't play drums. Like maybe I'm in the wrong field for me, right? And so that was uh, Sean. I'm going to say this to you, and I want all of your listeners to pay attention. Okay. Do not ever make a decision in your life based on a reading you've had. Yep. Okay. You asked me earlier, um, you know, my mentor astrologer, Catherine de Jersey, told me the day and time I met my husband and we met in India. Mm -hmm. I went to India despite the fact that she told me that. And as I, you know, I knew that she told me that and I thought, what am I doing? You know, I'm not going to meet anybody in India. Mm -hmm. But it was God's voice that told me to go. Right. And so when the Holy Spirit speaks to you, you do it. Mm -hmm. And if the Holy Spirit is saying to you, play the drums, how can you judge one channel or one planet or anything else like that? You're a complex human being. Mm -hmm. And if your heart tells you to do something, it overrides any chart you're ever going to get. Hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. I'm just sitting here thinking, like, has my spirit ever told me to play drums? Or did I do it just because I learned early and it became a skill? So I'm just kind of like, it's it's interesting. I just got my inner, inner voice. But you told me <laughs> that when you were um, a teenager, you loved it. Well, it's so funny because that's my memory of it. But now I, I think it's stories I've heard about myself. Right? Like where I, I don't remember a lot of my childhood, but I've been told that I, you know, um, at this particular thing, all I, I was fixated on the drummer, but I don't really remember the event myself. So it's, it's, I'm just kind of replaying my life all the time and wondering. So, um, well, when we can certainly, Sean, look at your designs and look at what is stable and what is not stable. Mm hmm. And if I recall, in your chart, you have this 1222 similar to this drummer. Now, the 12 is a portal to the spiritual world. Mm -hmm. It remains when we sleep. And the 22 is the social, and it's also connected to emotion. So in many ways, I think for you, the drums were a way to communicate emotion. Mm. Mm -hmm. And you use them as an expression of something you don't have words to say. Now, this person probably used the drums in a similar way. It's a spiritual language for the two of you. Mm. Okay. I'm going to reveal who it is because okay. I think because there's so many things like I didn't. And so, again, you kind of caught me off guard by saying, oh, I want to do meat sack number two, because in my head I was coming for one. So this has been fun because it's it was like a real detour. <laughs> and so I'm it's hit me on all fronts. But um, so this is uh, his name is Richard Starkey, but that's he was born as Richard Starkey, but his real name is Ringo Starr. So I'm oh. thinking you've heard of Ringo Starr. 
And yes, that was, I've heard of Ringo Starr. And that's why I obscured the city because the Beatles were so famous from being from Liverpool. So I thought, ooh, that might be a, a hint. But yeah, I wouldn't be. have even thought about it. Yeah, but he's a big enough star that I think a lot of people that would follow pop culture would pick up on that. So, um, yeah. Well, so, so if many, knowing it's, that it's Ringo Starr, then we can look at the importance of the success for him and his self-identity with the central channels, the Satsuma. And we can also see how fame in someone with so much reflector energy was inundated with confusion and trying to sort out who he was in the midst of all of this early fame. Mm -hmm. You and know, the fame was in the 60s, so he was young. He was young. He was the last, he was the oldest in the group, but was the last to join. Like they picked him up towards the end of, like they were just starting to break. So it must have been completely disruptive and exciting to his life. The Beatles famously did LSD and lots of other medicines in the 60s, which would have, you know, when you were talking about uh, using drugs to activate the sacral, I think is what you said. And I immediately was like, well, you know, I, I never did any of that until three years ago, but it's changed my life. Like it really connected me to the spiritual. And then we've been talking lots in the last couple of weeks about defining my values. And as you were talking about it, like he is famous for always saying peace and love. Like he's famous for always doing this and saying peace and love. And to the point where it's it's a meme, right? Like it's it's just part of pop culture is that Ringo does that and everyone that's around him does it. But like, that's amazing because that's, he's like, he's he somehow knows that and is echoing that in everything and all that he does. Um, the, it's kind of what the world needs right now. just look at something, the 550, Huh. So I did a um, layout over the weekend correlating passive intelligence in the tree of life with the different channels. And the 515 is actually the, the um, devil card. Hmm. And it's interesting because it's the 26th path of intelligence, which is the renewing intelligence freed from delusion of separateness and embracing the cycle of life as unifying consciousness in all spheres. So that's one, but he also has the 2946, which is the death card, interestingly enough which is the imaginative creative intelligence. I am the imaginative creative intelligence in a never ending transformation of name and form. So that's an interesting one also for him, but he doesn't have the whole keys of the kingdom, the 214, mm -hmm. which would be the path of probation and it's um, identifying what's right for you. So it's interesting that in all of that strength on the central column, what's missing is the personal individual channel. Hmm. He was a collective being who probably didn't really want to be a collective being. Mm -hmm. A lot of, um, he needed a lot of protection he probably didn't get. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, parents split by three, um, missed out on school um, at an early age, and then uh, very interesting for sure. Very, very Not surprising given the chart. Yeah. And then and so. Clearly not tuned into. And, and so one thing for listeners that's going to be new is that, you know, 95% of people, um, when their their integrated chart is a manifesting generator, right? So you want me to keep this chart up or should I stop the share and are we just going to talk? Uh, yeah, let's just talk. 
Yeah, let's just talk. So he's a projector in the mental world. He's a manifesting generator across all four worlds. So, cause I'm still wrapping my head around that. And I know that other viewers, that'll be very new. And for the most part will be an area of like, what, you know, like it's a, it's a real, so is, is it, he's still a projector in the mental world. He's just, and so does that mean that it's like a, a weighting of energy? Like how does, how does one look at that as far as the total integrated? Or is he just like straight up, he's a manifesting generator, get used to it, even though everything else has told you? Uh, the, I can only share my own experience yeah. using the charts. Um, when I did the research, well, when I was working with Ra and we were publishing our books, um, I kept saying to Ra, you know, Ra, I, I'm a manifester, but I don't feel like a manifester because I wait and I wait and I wait before I manifest. And then all of a sudden I know it's the right time and I manifest. Well, I have the 515 in the composite. I have the, um, uh, I get the sacral center in the lunar chart. And so, you know, I never felt like the characteristics of the manifestor applied to me. Mm -hmm. And when I did the calculations and laid out my charts initially, I went, holy shit, this explains it. Mm -hmm because it explained the pieces of the puzzle that no astrologer and certainly Ra could not tell me. Mm -hmm. It showed how I process information. So we're not looking at a given chart to say this is who you are. We're looking at the series of charts to say this is how you process information that makes you who you are. Mm -hmm. And so I, um, and actually I'm getting ready to release the books I wrote with Ra and I had completely forgotten about them. Mm -hmm. I haven't looked at them in years. And um, I did the research and I waited and I waited and I didn't, I released it to my small group of people but not publicly. Mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't release it publicly until again, a year and a half ago, the voice while I was doing figure eights at my husband's bedside said to me, you have the layout, you have the worlds, you have the integrated chart, you know what to do with it. Now's the time to release it. Mm. And I released it. So I'm a manifester. I get, I'm a manifesting generator in my integrated, but I wait until it's time to manifest. Mm -hmm. and 20 years is a long time to wait. Mm -hmm. I, that's so many questions. So the, uh, this voice, like, it, is it your voice? Is it, what no, does it sound like to voice. you? The Holy and Spirit. Okay. And you hear it in your head as not though it's in words. Not, no, it's, you, it's, no you, it, you, what I say to people is when you know what you know, because you know it and nobody can tell you, you don't know it. That's the voice. Hmm. Interesting. I know lots of things when I know it, but I've always been told I was wrong <laughs> by other people. Um, and I say to my clients, and certainly my human design people, when you know what you know, because you know it, and nobody can tell you you don't know it, honor yourself and not what other people are telling you to do. Mm -hmm. Because that's your truth and nobody should tell you that you're different than your truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. Well, and I've, I've... I've said this to you already, but I'm going to say this here so others can hear it. Like I, so I was already a manifesting generator based on just traditional human design, but in the four worlds and the integrated, I am still. Um, but just how empowering 
that new like lens has been because I, I there's like four additional channels that I had that I, I didn't know I had. And I've read the channels before and I don't remember what I thought at the time, but I just remember going, well, that's not me. So I, I think I just kind of like half read it. When I read it, knowing that it was in my integration, really? I was like, holy shit, that is ex like, it was like, like it resonated more than channels I read about myself that were in my design before, because I was still pessimistic about the whole thing. This was different. This was like a second wave of like, it literally was who I am and how I behave. It was just ding, 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 ding. So like, a, a, you know, again, thank you for that. Cause it's really empowering. And you've said it before, like, and, I, and I don't want to get it wrong, but like, the traditional human design stuff that a lot of us are working from is very disempowering. There's all this talk of the not self, there's elements missing. And so I never, it never fully resonated. And in the last month it's knocked me on my ass. How much, like, it's amazing. And then, and it's so funny, like hearing about Ringo's design and some of the things. And, and of course I, I, I pattern match. So there's certain things where I'm like, okay, that's, that's me too, but just, the, you know, the fascinating trajectory of his path. In the 60s, he had access to drugs, medicine, that eventually, that, you know, right around the same time were also then completely taboo and, and the world was cut off from it and now is kind of returning, right? Like here in Canada, cannabis is allowed everywhere. And I just see people healing everywhere <laughs> and, and they have access to this, right? Um, it's just so interesting, so. And then, and back to the values thing, like we've talked about values and I'm working, I, I, I feel quite rooted in mine. So now I want to really lock, like really lock that in, but he's done that intuitively his whole life. Like he's got them down to two, it's peace and love. It's like literally in his, he does it, he displays it physically, verbally, he embodies it, he lives it. And he's had a fantastic, well, at least from the outside, a very, a fantastic seeming life right like where he's just gets to connect and do amazing things and perform and it's just it's cool yeah so anyways that was just a just sending a bunch of gratitude um, the the 515 i would say and does he have um oh yeah he has the 52 he has the 52 and his spiritual. And he has the 27. And he has the 56. So those are gates that um, I would associate with peace and love. So he intuitively picked up on that, or do you think, and I mean, you don't know, but in the 60s and the 70s on this medicine, his own voice told him, you know, like, is it quite possible that if I had a conversation with him, he would say spirit told him peace and love and he just saw it in his mind and. Yes. He, right, interesting. Um, the strong connection between the, uh, sacral and the self and the interesting tests around the 214 which would be the direction of the self which he doesn't have mm -hmm. and the so when you're dealing with someone who has the kind of openness that he has how would he psychologically identify who he really is it would be by somebody in his life saying what do you feel what feels right to you mm -hmm. and it might be an openness it may be a stillness i mean the 52 is a channel a format channel that's very focused and very still i mean i know that channel i have the 52 nine mm -hmm. and it's a sense of inner peace. Hmm. Um, so, you know, you can, we can 
take characteristics of a person once we know them and see where it falls within the chart, which is a different way to do it. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously, he anchored on the postnatal more than he focused and lived out his natal. He became a symbol to people. Mm -hmm. And it's that central sacral to the self that he held on to and closed out the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. He's also, um, and I wonder if you would see that in his designer chart, like he's been married since like 81 to the same person, which in these days, like is kind of a unicorn thing, right? People just don't stay together. So is there anything in, in the body graph that would suggest? I'd have to see the spouse. Right. I because she, she probably uh, fills in some anchoring for him. And they would have felt that bond spiritually, I guess. Um, right. I mean, you know, if she hooked the central, the uh, self-sacral connection to the throat or to the root, then he would have had a, a, a much easier time staying anchored within himself. Mm. So did some of his drug use stop when he met her? I don't know. I know because just looking up his his Wikipedia, like late eighties, he battled alcoholism. I think he still smokes like cigarettes. Um, yeah, I don't know. I know. Yeah, I just don't know. Actually, um, interesting. And he's had several careers in a way, right? He was the drummer for the Beatles. He's got his all star band, which I've seen one of his shows, and it's just amazing. It's just a group of. All these famous other musicians, he, every tour, it's different people that are touring with him. And he plays drums to their songs, along with some of his famous songs, like mm. Garden and stuff, right? And it's such a neat show. So he's kind of like a ringleader, like a circus, like he's he's bringing this together. And it's, but it's the all-star band. And, you know, on, it's funny enough, on his bass drum, he's got a star, and I've got one on mine, because mm. I didn't... At the time, it was for a David Bowie thing, but in my head, I'm like, huh, there's some connection there. Um, and then later, he was famous for being the narrator for Thomas the Tank Engine, which was a children's show. I, mean, I think he did that for like a decade or something. Hmm. So some people only know him as the voice for that, right? Like generation, generally, generationally, he's always been sort of relevant and there, despite the fact, and it, this is also, I, I'm just, it's interesting, but like, most there's actually literally people all the time arguing about whether Ringo is a good drummer or not because his the parts he played all the drummers that I respect say like he played to the song whereas a lot of drummers these days are very technical and it's it's just like there's not a lot of feel he and he was uh, he's left-handed but played a right-handed drum kit so everything he did was uniquely fashioned for the music. He played to the song, and so that's what he's most famous for. But 40 years later, he's viewed by some as a shitty drummer because he's not technical, because he's not, you know what I mean? It's it's a very interesting thing, but lots of drummers. But, but you see, he merged with the music. Mm -hmm. yeah, so no, his gift was his undefined, um, the, the reflector layers allowed him to be the music. Mm -hmm. He, I guess he also famously was like kind of trying to hold the Beatles together when they were breaking apart. Like he, he went to Paul McCartney's house one day apparently and, and like Paul sent him away and told him to fuck off because he was kind of like giving information, but he ended up being kind of the messenger between the band. I don't know if that's like a projector energy, like trying to direct like mentally trying to direct the band towards like, let's try to keep this together because they were obviously a big deal and there's a big impact. When you start thinking about like when a band like that breaks up, there's actually other people impacted by it. The people that right. work with them, right? So actually, it's kind of like getting divorced. Like what happens to our kids? What happens to this enterprise that went from four people to 
probably 200 within right. years, right? There's a huge, crazy impact that the world doesn't even see, right? So there's a there's a weight to that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, neat. Um, yeah, you said he's a caretaker, could be emotionally volatile. I, I resonate with that. <laughs> so like, as soon as you said that, I was like, Ugh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, new anxiety when things weren't right and when they were right and it was yeah it was non-verbal to his family when he was a child like he was communicating it but not through words yeah and then the uh yeah just so interesting <laughs> um why don't we stop there unless you want to comment on anything else or or your impressions or uh no i'm fine i mean i think it's pretty interesting to look at it this way mm -hmm. Um, and to look at the uh, paths of intelligence is especially informing for me. And that's from the, the Kabbalah, right? Kabbalistic Tree of Life. Mm -hmm. The human design system is a synthesis. Kabbalistic Tree of Life, chakras, astrology, the I Ching, and the piece that I've added that was never added before is the four worlds and the multi-dimensional layers if and the fact that a baby is not defined at the moment of birth and now in pediatric literature the books are saying the first three months of life are the missing fourth trimester of pregnancy mm -hmm. so to use the calculations over a three-month period that goes to and a huge difference between what Ra believed and what I believe is that I do believe humans have choice. Mm -hmm. We choose how we relate. We choose how we use our energy. And Ra believed there was no choice. Mm -hmm. Which so, I feels disempowering. I, I, so, I would say I choose how I show up. Like yes. that that's, feels right to me. So, yeah. Uh, I think we all choose how we show up mm -hmm. and to tell somebody that they don't have choice um, tells them to be at the mercy of what's outside them, not inside them. Mm -hmm. And I can't go with that. Yeah, me either. So, you know, in looking at someone like Ringo, um, would I know ahead of time that he would be a great musician and a great drummer? No, because he used the music and the drumming as a way to communicate what he couldn't communicate and as a way to merge the worlds. Mm -hmm. But then when you begin to look at how did he actually use his energy in the worlds, to be a great musician, then we can make sense out of it. Mm -hmm. Well, see, that's an interesting discussion right there, right? So we just talked about his illnesses as a child and you you point out the body graph where that would be occurring. So even just that would be useful for parents in the future of just like trying to get- But you wouldn't know that if a child was a reflector that they would have illness mm -hmm. because it's an interaction between the environment and the person mm -hmm. and the parents. And and where they were, right? And it seems to me the more I vibe with my design and kind of my outer authority magnifies, I'm being put in situations and meeting people like you that I wouldn't have met otherwise, right? So when I look at his life and how like really difficult start, um, but somehow ended up in the most famous musical group in the world ever and then uh and then in the 60s 70s discovered uh lsd and things which opened his mind which basically created his personal brand and value system outside of the beatles right like that happened after he was in the beatles so is that was it luck that he ended up in the beatles was it uh he was in the right place energetically and somehow was already kind of aligned is it yes, just um randomness? hold on mystery 
Um, he has a strong chart. Um, you would expect um, that um, he would do something significant, look at the composite. Whereas if you just looked at the basic charts, you wouldn't necessarily know. Mm. Interesting. Very interesting to look at charts. That's why I like this game, because and especially because I learn a ton each time, right? Um, but I, I I feel like for the the reader, you know, you're basically you're looking. You don't know. Okay, it, I was thinking about it this morning. Almost like if someone does a, a a tarot reading or a psychic reading with someone, you have the person sitting across from them. You're going to pick up on their energies. You're going to pick up on a like their eye twitches because you've hit a nerve. Right. You don't have any of that. You're just literally looking at this date and then trying to paint an illustration of what could have been. Right. And like just so many things here. I was just like, yep, uh huh, yep. It's it was fascinating. So I hope you enjoyed it too, because it's it's a neat, it's, it's a validation. I think it's good. Yes, it's good. It's fun. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, why don't we wrap that up? I'm looking forward to uh, like this. You said you're going to help me do a reading of our uh, our new puppy Willow, and I think that'd be a really interesting thing to share with the world too, because mm -hmm. I don't think I've seen a animal r reading before, other than so I think it's. That'd be an interesting way to do it. So we need to find a time. I'm going to make sure she's in my lap so that she can hear it. <laughs> so, but she's not here today. What kind so, of puppy is she? Uh, golden Doodle. Ah. And so we're, last night was night two and she slept for like seven hours. Like so far, a very, very easy puppy. So. Is she in a kennel? Uh, or like a crate, you mean? Yeah, yeah, we've got, and but what we did and we've learned from other dogs is she needs to know we're near. So we got one where the top can zip open. And so mm -hmm. we just stick our hand in there so that she can smell us and know we're there, but we don't have to like, you know, keep her 20 feet away. So she whined for like 10 minutes and then she was done. She was good. She mm -hmm. knew we were there. So that, that we, seemed to be the trick. That's... We have two doodles. Do you? Yeah. Two doodles and two Siamese cats. Have you always had Siamese cats? I know mm -hmm. Noble was one, right? So. Mm. Uh, always Siamese. What's the draw to Siamese? Like just your first one and then you just always got one after or? Um, no, um, I specifically got a Siamese cat. I was told to get a Siamese cat. All right, of course. <laughs> I was led to a Siamese cat and um, it was so interesting. When I was in second year of graduate school, I always had an animal, mostly dogs. But you, when you're in graduate school, you can't have a dog. It's mm -hmm. too hard. So I wanted my down, we lived on a third floor walk up. So we lived on the third floor and this second floor neighbor had a Siamese cat. And when I'd go down to get the mail, this cat would come out and follow me. And I really liked the Siamese cat. I liked the talking and the communicating and stuff. And so I got Noble and Noble hated the lady whose Siamese cat it was. And he would go into her apartment and he and the other cat would say hello to each other, but he, he would hiss her. Mm -hmm. It was Mrs. Jacobs. But um, yeah, once I got Noble, you know, I, I never had any other kind of cat. Mm. Cool. All right. And I've had probably, at our peak, we had 13 cats when I had the twin kittens, because we had a litter of kittens on whom I got the exact times. Oh, well. So. And you kept a couple or? We kept uh, all seven, all six. Oh, really? Oh, you're not kidding. You had that many? We had 13 cats. <laughs> wow. Yes. We couldn't get, well, our son took two finally. Okay. But we couldn't give them away. Right. So for 18 years, we had 13 cats. Wow. It was a lot. Yeah, I bet. You were a cat lady. <laughs> I was a cat lady. 
Cool. All right. Well, my head's swimming. I'm going to need to go and just like let this. And I have to go too. I have clients all afternoon. Okay. So good to see you. Okay. Take care. Have a good day. Bye.